This week on The Watchmen, it's the premier pro-Israel event in the United States, and we've got a front row seat as Vice President Mike Pence, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, the one and only Pastor John Hagee, and many more raise their voices for Israel and America at the Kufi Washington Summit. If the world knows nothing else, the world knows this. America stands with Israel. Plus, U.S. Ambassador to Israel David Friedman and nationally syndicated talk radio host Dennis Prager are here to share why Israel matters for every American. It's all this week, only right here on The Watchman. Welcome to The Watchman and welcome to the Christians United for Israel Washington Summit. We are in D.C. at the Washington Convention Center in the heart of our nation's capital for the biggest and most influential pro-Israel event in the United States. This is the Kufi Washington Summit. It's our 14th annual summit and folks, it is our biggest and best yet. Just listen to this lineup of speakers that you will see tonight right here on The Watchman Show. Number one. Vice President Mike Pence, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, National Security Advisor John Bolton, White House Advisor Jason Greenblatt, and many more. This is an all-star lineup of the top officials in the United States right here at the Kufi Washington Summit. And a major announcement here at the summit that Christians United for Israel has passed the 7 million member mark. Wow, folks, wrap your head around that. Kufi is the largest pro-Israel movement, not only in the United States, but in the world. Seven million committed followers of Jesus standing openly and boldly with Israel and the Jewish people. We've never seen a movement like this in the 2,000 year history of the church until now. So let's take a look at some of the sights and sounds from the 14th annual Kufi Washington Summit. knows nothing else, the world knows this. America stands with Israel. Thank you for your willingness to stand up and engage and fight. Fight for America, fight for Israel, and fight for doing what's right. Kufa has an enormous, enormous impact here in Washington, across the country, and across the world. I was able to travel now twice to see our embassy, the State Department's embassy, that was moved to Jerusalem to recognize a simple reality of Jerusalem, Israel's capital, now, now and forever. No regime that chants death to America or death to Israel will get a deal from this administration. Pastor Hagee, I want to thank you for your enduring, tremendous support. Thanks to your leadership, now there are millions and millions of devout Christians who stand with Israel. We are now seven million plus points of light, and light always conquers darkness. CUFI was born for such a time as this, not to shuffle paper and tell war stories, but engage the enemies of Israel, engage anti-Semitism, and destroy it in our generation. May God bless you all. Folks, what a lineup. You see the power of Kufi there that we're able to attract Vice President Mike Pence, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, National Security Advisor John Bolton, and many more, all under one roof in one day 
and for one event. But we also had our very good friend, the U.S. Ambassador to Israel, David Friedman. Now, Ambassador Friedman is the first American ambassador to serve at the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem, where it belongs. It still feels so good to say that. We had a chance to catch up with him before he took the stage at the Night to Honor Israel here at the Kufai Washington Summit. Take a look. We are here with the one and only U.S. Ambassador to Israel, David Friedman, here at your first Kufai Washington Summit. This is fantastic. Yeah, but you're no stranger to Kufai, by the way. Not at all, but I haven't been to a summit and I'm yeah. really excited. I love the crowd. Yeah, now Ambassador Friedman is our keynote speaker tonight. It's going to be an amazing night. So much going on. Hey, just recently you were a part of the ceremony, uh, I should say the reopening of the ancient pilgrimage road uh, in Jerusalem. Tell us a bit about that experience, Ambassador, and how that's just a sign of some of the wonderful things going on in Jerusalem today that you have a firsthand glimpse at every day. Well, you know, it started with a burst sewage pipe 15 years ago, and they brought in the, uh, the plumbers, and they realized this was no ordinary job they were doing. And as they started to excavate, archaeologists came in, and they discovered, first of all, the, the pool that was built by Hezekiah in 700 B.C., which was then expanded uh, in the Herodian period uh, to this massive pool that pilgrims of all types, Jewish and non-Jewish, would uh, immerse themselves in before they ascended to the temple. And then after they discovered the pool, they said, well, is there, is there a pathway from the pool to the, uh, up to the temple? And they discovered a completely intact road, the same flagstones as you have at the entrance to the uh, walls of the temple, 2,000 feet of, uh, of stairways and steps. This is where Jesus ascended to the temple. This is where over 2 million pilgrims ascended to the temple. You can stand there. It's not like looking at an ancient coin or a shard of glass or a parchment. You can stand there and you are immersed in history. It's incredible. Talk about why an event like this showing overwhelming Christian support for Israel and the Jewish people is so important. Well, look, I think this is a continuation of a uh, more than a 200 year uh, romance between the United States and Israel. It goes back long before the creation of the state of Israel. It goes back to John Adams. I think uh, Secretary Pompeo uh, quoted from our second president, John Adams, who said, uh, in Judea, I wish a, a Jewish state. And uh, it's just, this is the, this is the logical uh, outcome of that relationship of so many years. Finally, though, we're seeing, uh, we're seeing people in, in, sufficient, in sufficient quantity to make a real difference. I mean, we're talking about millions and millions of Christians who support and love Israel uh, in ways like never before. I think it has a profound effect on Israel's safety and security. Ambassador, that's just one other symbol of that growing U.S.-Israel relationship under President Trump. Never been stronger. You have a front row seat for that as well. Tell us about that. I mean, unprecedented cooperation between Israel and the U.S. right now. Look, it exists on every level. It exists from uh, the mundane, from the commercial relationships to the, you know, to the to the high tech, to the intel, to the military uh, cooperation. But then, of course, it exists uh, at a at a fundamentally uh, emotional, heartfelt level as well. And uh, I don't minimize that because, look, I think that uh, all of us stand on the shoulders of history, on the shoulders of our forefathers. That's who we are. That's our DNA. I think if you deny someone's history, you know, you can't live in peace with them. And um, I'm so happy to see the United States recognizing the deep historical bonds between Israel and, uh, and our own uh, founding fathers. And it's just uh, growing in a, in a very good way. And look, the, the president, when he appointed me, he said, look, I want you to repair and restore the relationship between the United States and Israel. And that's what we've been trying to do since the day that I became uh, the ambassador. I know you're a student of history, Ambassador. You mentioned history. You have a place in history now as the first ambassador to serve in Jerusalem, an historic moment of the embassy moving to Jerusalem. And you're a man of faith. And you've talked about that on TBN, your strong faith, how it motivates you. Last question, because I know you got to run and speak. When the band starts playing, you know it's a signal. The rise of anti-Semitism around the world, uh, personal for you, number one, obviously. Uh, but why is it so important with that happening for this, for this relationship to continue to grow? Look, I think Israel is, is the ultimate answer to anti-Semitism. 
Uh, Jews have been uh, through so much, so much torment over thousands of years, from inquisitions to crusades to uh, to pogroms to the Holocaust to so many other things. But there was never a state of Israel at any point during all those horrors. The state of Israel is the bulwark against anti-Semitism. Of course we have to fight it wherever we see it, but thank God we have the state of Israel, which I think protects the Jewish people in ways like never before. And that's why it's so gratifying to see the Christian community standing with Israel, because when they do that, they're also standing against anti-Semitism. Ambassador, thank God we have you serving America in Israel. Ambassador, thank you so much. We look thank forward you. to seeing you tonight. You have a great night to honor Israel. Well, you can see we had the political area covered here at the summit with top officials from the United States and Israel. But we also had top media figures right here at the Kufi Washington Summit. Stick around after the break for my conversation with Dennis Prager. We're coming to you from DC. It's the Kufi Washington Summit. Don't move. From terrorists who would annihilate her with bombs and bullets to so-called activists that would eliminate her with boycotts and sanctions, Israel's enemies are on the march. In Why Israel? You will learn how to be an active defender of the Jewish state, knowledgeable and powerful, as you stand up for truth. You'll receive the biblical evidence proving Israel's special place in God's plan. Learn how his steadfast commitment to his people is a matter of fact, not opinion. From its miraculous rebirth as a modern state to the dangerous threats it presently faces, Israel's inspiring journey is laid out in this short booklet. Supporting Israel is a biblical mandate for all Christians. In Why Israel, you will discover why you should care about the Jewish state and what you can do to stand with God's chosen people. We are here at the Kufi Washington Summit with nationally syndicated talk radio host, prolific author, voice for moral clarity, Dennis Prager. Dennis, welcome to the Watchman Show. Welcome to the Kufi Washington Summit. Everything is true. It's great to be a Kufi. It's great to be at the Watchman. And I think that I have spoken almost every Kufi national conference for about 15 years. Yeah. And it's every year a deep honor for me and i say this from the bottom of my heart this organization it gives the human being hope because there is a lot of dark out there the the anti-israel takeover of the campus in the western world is almost unbelievable and then you have all these young hundreds almost a thousand young people here it's it's a it's a big deal. Yeah, is that trend reversible, Dennis, on campus? I mean, the yes, every is trend big. is reversible if enough people make enough arguments to enough young people. Yeah, that's but the, here's here's a rule of life: bad guys make better arguments than good guys. We don't polish our arguments, and I will tell you why: because good folks think that their goodness is self-evident. So, and I asked this of Israelis many years ago, and I would say, why don't you make your case better? And the general answer was, we don't think we have to. It's so obvious. We are a liberal democracy. They're tyrannies. What, they want to destroy us. We don't want to destroy them. What's the case? Christians forgot how to sell Christianity. Jews forgot how to sell Judaism and the West forgot how to sell the West. So the, the nihilists are taking over. You know, Dennis, you are a prolific author, as we mentioned, you've written great volumes about anti-Semitism. We see anti-Semitism on the rise around the world. We've seen two horrific, deadly attacks, even here in the US over the past year. Why does that make an event like this, Christians United for Israel, thousands of Christians here standing with the Jewish people, why does it make this event even more important for these times we're living in? 
I am more worried about the left's onslaught on campuses and in the media than I am of the lone crackpot who shows up at, at Pittsburgh or uh, P Poway, yeah. to be perfectly honest. Uh, there's, nothing, there's nothing we could do, in a sense, ab about the individual lunatic. Yeah. It's, a, it, it's, beyond, it's, it's, it's a tragedy, almost like an earthquake. You can't predict earthquakes, you can't predict that. But the amount of hate at Israel that uh, uh, pro-Israel Christians and Jews feel on campuses, that's the real deal. And they're, and they're producing adults who will go into politics, go into economics and hurt, and hurt Israel. But of course, what that ends up doing, as my speech showed today, or I tried to show. And you did. Well, thank you, was that ultimately anti-Semitism and anti-Israel is anti-Semitism. Okay, uh, th this nonsense that there are 212 countries and the only one I don't think has a right to exist is the Jewish country, but I'm not anti-Jewish. It, it, these people are lying to themselves as well as to us, but they don't fool us, yeah. okay? If you uh, isolate the only Jewish state for your particular hostility, you don't like Jewish states, <laughs> okay? Let's be honest. Yeah. So yes, we, we need to turn we need to turn that around. That's what I, I you, thank you. I try to do with PragerU. Kufi yes. is doing it. Prager University uh, videos are doing it. This, and we're not the only ones, thank no. God. But but we're not winning. Yeah. We're gaining, but we're not winning. Yeah. The assault on Israel on campus around the world takes on many forms, Dennis. We could talk all day about Iran and Hamas and Hezbollah, the violent jihadist against Israel but you just touched on it. There's that more sort of subversive anti-Israel, anti-Semitic tack taken by the BDS movement. Uh, are they switching tactics now? They can't defeat Israel with guns and bombs. Is this a conscious shift on the part of the anti-Semitic, anti-Israel radicals? The ultimate goal of uh, the vast majority of people active uh, on BDS is, is the end of Israel. I, I mean, it's not the end of occupation. Yeah. Israel was hated before occupation. Israel be, will be hated after occupation. Israel has offered to end occupation. The Palestinians decided that that offer should be met with blowing up Jewish kids in pizza parlors. Th that's, that's the fact. Five times the Palestinians said no to a Palestinian state. Uh, let, let, let's, let's be real. They don't want a Palestinian state. They want no Jewish state. And the naive Westerner doesn't recognize that. Hey, tell us what you're working on right now. A great Bible commentary. Two are out, Genesis and Exodus. And this is the, this, my whole life I've been teaching the Torah to non-Jews as much as to Jews, because either the Torah has something to say to everybody or it has nothing to say to anybody. It, it, it's, it's the greatest book ever written. It is the basis of Judaism, basis of Christianity. And it is the source of wisdom in my life. It is the source of wisdom in the Western world. The ignorance of the, of the Bible is one way to summarize the crisis in, in American life. So I'm attempting to explain it so rationally. It's called the Rational Bible. Each volume is called the Rational Bible. I'm, explain, I'm explaining it so rationally that the biggest skeptic will have to say, whoa, that is life changing. And that's my attempt. Dennis Prager, thank you so much. You're a joy. Thanks again to Dennis Prager for taking time out of his very busy schedule to sit down with us here at the Kufi Summit. Well, coming up after the break, some more leading voices from Israel and America on why this U.S.-Israel relationship is so important and how it's stronger than ever. Do not miss this. Stick around. With over 3.5 million members, Christians United for Israel is the largest pro-Israel organization in America. And for Zion's sake, we will not remain silent. We won't stand for the lies and political attacks that threaten Israel's safety and the future of the Jewish people in their God-given homeland. We want you to join us in this sacred movement. The Jewish people are not alone. Christians United for Israel, I want to thank you for standing up for Israel. I want to thank you for standing up and being counted. May God Bless you all. Thank you. Israel needs you to take a stand. Join Christians United for Israel. Make your voice heard and be remembered as a defender of Israel.
the apple of God's eye. Welcome back to The Watchman and welcome back to Washington, D.C. This is our Kufi Summit. We're in the heart of the nation's capital at the Washington Convention Center. Over 5,000 committed pro-Israel activists standing proudly and boldly with Israel and the Jewish people. Now, earlier in the show, you saw our lineup of speakers, Vice President Mike Pence, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and many more. But we also had some leading analysts and experts on Middle East affairs right here at the Kufi Summit. Here's a look at some of what they brought to the table. This is always a big highlight for me coming to the Kufi Summit. I get very emotional, you know, uh, for the Jewish people. Uh, we're not used to having thousands of people, millions of people who love us and are, and are standing with us. And that's really the big, the big change that Kufi has made yeah. for the Jewish community is hey, wait a second, there's an army of people of 7 million plus who are standing with us and who love us and are there for us in our time of need. And, that's, and that I get very emotional. As a Christian, you know, I love everything about the Bible because, I mean, what the Lord, my Lord Jesus Christ, uh, uh, teach me in the Bible. I mean, uh, uh, everything is about Israel. You know, his people, his country, you know, his blessings. He's, he's everything. It's really been remarkable. I was thinking about it yesterday. We heard from the Vice President, the Secretary of State. We heard from uh, former Ambassador uh, John Bolton. Today, uh, a cadre of senators, both political and faith leaders gathered here yeah. uh, to accomplish one great purpose, and that was to stand up and speak up in support of Israel. The Iranian regime wants to establish and reestablish a, an extremely toxic, dangerous mix of, I'll call it the embodiment of ideas. They want to rebuild the Persian Empire, but they want to do it as an Islamic radical empire run by essentially a fascist regime. As King David wrote in the Psalms 3,000 years ago, Jerusalem unites us all together. You see the fulfillment of the kings, the prophets, what they said in the Bible thousands of years ago, we see it in our day. It's Bible times, as you and I talk about all the time, we're living in Bible times. Thanks again to all of our great Kufi speakers for their expert analysis. Folks, the best in the world when it comes to Israel, the Middle East, and why it all matters to you, we're gathered here at the Kufi Washington Summit. If you weren't here this year, you'll be here next year in 2020. It is the premier pro-Israel event in the United States. Coming up after the break, my final thoughts about what this all means for Israel, for America, and for you. Don't move. Today, we are seeing the rise of an old enemy wearing a new mask. Once, anti-Semitism was displayed by those in white hoods or wearing the twisted cross of the swastika. But today, this old hatred hides in plain sight. Only a decade ago, anti-Semites were shunned and despised. Now, this appalling bigotry has a platform on Twitter and is applauded in the public square. CUFI was built for such a time as this. We will not let this darkness dim our light, for Christians are a light unto the world and Israel is a light unto the nations. Join us. Don't curse the darkness. Shine the light. And welcome back to The Watchman. We are wrapping up from the D.C. Convention Center in the heart of the nation's capital, the 14th annual Kufi Washington Summit, our biggest, our best yet. You've seen the lineup of speakers. You've seen the message. You've heard the numbers. Seven million and growing right now is Christians United for Israel. Exciting times, Bible times that we're living in. And if you are a member of Christians United for Israel, you are a part of this great Bible story that's being written right now. I was able to play a small part here at the Kufi Washington Summit and address our audience on why this 2019 and beyond is a moment of truth for Christian Zionists
for followers of Jesus to stand up for Israel and the Jewish people. Take a look. We have to be voices for truth as believers. Man, no one else is going to do it. If you're looking to Europe, the European Union, China, Russia, the UN, if you're looking to them to be beacons of moral clarity, then you're looking in the wrong place. You should look in the mirror. You've been chosen for such a time as this by God Almighty. So don't look elsewhere, don't look over there, don't look overseas, let's look within. You know, it's always an honor and a privilege to be here at the Kufi Washington Summit to address our audience, over 5,000 people in the DC Convention Center, in the heart of Washington, DC, our nation's capital, standing strong for Israel, for America, and for all that is good and true. Folks, this is a movement for Zion's sake and for such a time as this. If you're not a part of this, you need to be a part of it right now. This is what God is doing today among the body of Christ. His hand is on Israel, his land and his people, and his hand is on this movement, Christians United for Israel, right now. You see the phone number, you see the URL on your screen. Call, click, join us today for such a time as this. And if you weren't here in 2019, join us right here in DC in 2020 for the premier pro-Israel event in the United States, the Kufi Washington Summit. In the meantime, from Washington, DC, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace.